These days, we're used to just plugging things into our computers and having them simply work right away. And while it's true that you might need to install drivers for an odd couple of things like a chipset or RGB, Windows does a remarkably good job of knowing exactly what's connected to the PC and using appropriate drivers. But it wasn't always like this. Back before the days of plug and play hardware, you had to manually configure how the system would assign resources to whichever gadget you were installing. Every piece of hardware needs to be assigned addresses for memory and I.O. access so the system knows where to send data. These days, it's almost always handled automatically by the operating system. But back in the day, you had to find free addresses yourself and possibly even set switches or do soldering on the actual hardware, not things that lend themselves well to novice users. Plug and Play came to save us with the release of Windows 95. You might remember how it would try and automatically set up hardware when you first installed the OS. I mean, you gotta be pretty old for that though. <laughs> Although there were other prior technologies that tried to enable automatic hardware setup, the Windows 95 launch marked the first time consumers experienced widespread support for the technology. Of course, that didn't necessarily mean that it worked well. Although Windows 95 could recognize some devices without a hitch, there still wasn't a universal plug and play standard that all device manufacturers used. And to complicate matters, the BIOS had to be on the same page as the device and the OS as well. Furthermore, this was back when the internet was in its infancy and tons of users running Windows 95 didn't even have an internet connection. Meaning that while Windows came with some drivers preloaded, it couldn't cover everything as the OS was unable to pull drivers off the server and oftentimes the system wouldn't know what to do with the new gadget. This led users to derisively refer to the technology as plug and pray, as you never quite knew if the system would automatically recognize the device or not when you first plugged it in. Indeed, Microsoft actually had an infamous egg on their face moment during the Windows 98 demo that featured Bill Gates himself. They plugged in a scanner in an attempt to show how the new OS supported plug and play and the system blue screened as soon as it was connected. You'll notice that this scanner build, whoa. <laughs> Big oof. But as time went on, the industry figured out improvements to the technology. The ACPI standard, which started becoming widespread in the early 2000s, gave Windows a more standardized way to connect devices rather than relying on firmware support from the BIOS, which was more inconsistent. ACPI allowed the motherboard to tell Windows automatically what hardware was connected, which was a big step in the right direction. Manufacturers of other devices also started baking in more information that the system could read to automatically tell what was plugged in. For example, PCI adapter cards, including ones that use the later PCI Express protocol, have a configuration space that contains information about what kind of device it is who made it, and what its capabilities are so that the system can react accordingly. Similarly, USB devices have controller chips inside them that also contain identifying information so that Windows can fetch the right drivers. And as we alluded to earlier, the ubiquity of high-speed internet connections has made it feasible for Windows itself to take these hardware identifiers and match them with a large repository of up-to-date drivers that manufacturers send to Microsoft, making it trivial for the OS to grab a needed driver in most cases. Although this is extremely convenient, part of me does still miss the days when you had to insert a floppy disk with a driver and listen to it make all sorts of ungodly noises. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. <laughs> Forget about being tethered down with wires or needing an expensive console or PC, the Quest 2 delivers blazing performance and next-gen graphics with unparalleled freedom. Play awe-inspiring games, get a front row seat to live events, or just take a break and enjoy your favorite movies and shows on a stunning display that features 50% more pixels than the original Quest. At the heart of the Quest 2 is the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2, a big upgrade from the original Quest and its Snapdragon 835, so you'll have all the speed and performance you need. The Quest 2 also features Wi-Fi 6 for the fastest download speeds ever. And now you can improve even further on the Quest 2 experience with a great lineup of accessories for more comfort, power, and adaptability. My favorite is the padded Quest 2 carrying case, which fits the headset, two touch controllers, a charging cable, and power adapter, as well as an Elite Strap or Elite Strap with battery. And if you're not sure what the Elite Strap is, it's an ergonomically designed strap that enhances support and comfort with a quick twist of the fit wheel. And the Elite Strap with battery will provide more playtime and even comes with a carrying case included. 
There's also the Quest 2 Fit Pack, which includes a pair of light blockers and breathable interchangeable facial interfaces so that you can get just the right fit for your face. The VR Cover facial interface is not only wipeable, it also has anti-fog air vents, so you can keep your eyes on the action no matter what. And of course, we have to mention the Oculus Link, which allows you to connect the Quest 2 to your PC for great PC VR experiences, including your favorite games. And it's super simple to use. Just connect the optical fiber cable or a high-quality USB 3.0 Type-C cable, and you're ready to go. And if all of this isn't enough, there's also a full lineup of Oculus-ready accessories from great brands like Anchor and Logitech. So learn more about the Quest 2 and its accessories at the link below. So thanks for watching TechWiki. If you like this video, give us a like, hit subscribe, and be sure to hit us up in the comments section with your suggestions for topics that we should cover in the future.